at the point that you're really ready to call in big, massive, like life altering transformation, it requires going deep. The height of your transformation and the success that happens on the other side is going to match the depth at which you're willing to meet yourself in your current patterns, the things that need to shift, and the parts of you that maybe you've been afraid to look at. So when we talk about the gap season, this season where you've left the old you, this old identity, and you're on your way, stepping into your higher self and the next version of you, but you're in this in-between season where it's all about unlearning things you need to unlearn, shedding old patterns, habits, relationships, anything that can't come along with you, where you're going next. When I reached out to our community recently and asked what questions you have for navigating a gap season, you know, I wanted to get a pulse. Where are people at? What are you struggling with? A lot of you asked really the million dollar question, which has to do with, okay, if we're going in and we're doing this inner work, how do you actually reprogram those old beliefs and transform them into beliefs that fit the version of you that you're stepping into? And It's been this season for me where I'm deep in this journey. I'm really not sharing this as someone who's an expert. I'm just going to share today and answer some of these questions based on what I'm learning, what has worked for me. And then especially since I'm nerding out on this whole world of how you actually go in and reprogram these beliefs, I can't wait to bring some amazing guests onto the podcast later this year. People who are actually experts who can teach us some of these different modalities and different ways to actually go in and do the true reprogramming at the deeper levels that actually create change. And that's the thing that I kind of want to start off by sharing that I've really learned about myself in this season. And there might be some of you who really resonate with this, that I've been someone who's done personal development for over 20 years. I really found personal development in college at a similar time where I was just going through a lot of transition and learning about myself. And it was really in the wake of, it's actually kind of funny, like it was a bad breakup that kind of pushed me into personal development because I was just looking to understand myself. I was looking to understand these emotions I was processing through. And in the wake of that, I found this passion for growth and learning about myself and learning about the mind. But if I'm being honest, learning about the mind and and doing work more at the mind level was kind of where I stopped without realizing it. I didn't realize consciously that I wasn't doing the deeper healing. I just noticed that I could logically understand something all day long, but I still struggled to maybe transform that habit. Or I could logically understand that perfectionism maybe was the root of some of the things that I wanted to shift in my life. But beyond changing the surface level habit, I never learned, I just didn't know that this was even a thing. I didn't really learn how to look underneath at the deeper roots of why these surface habits show up in our lives. So for you, as we've been navigating this conversation and when we talk about things like that Joe Dispenza quote that I love, which says, in order to step into a new future, you have to first confront the parts of you that aren't going there. And maybe you do know that there are some beliefs, there are some habits, the ways you show up in the world that you really want to shift. But what I've noticed, at least this is true for me, when I go to work on just trying to shift the surface level habit, I might even have success shifting that habit, but I don't fully get the result that I want because I haven't addressed it at the root. If you think of like a tree, and the fruit that a tree produces, that's the surface level results. And there are all these things that actually go into what is required, the soil that has to be there, the roots of the tree and how healthy they are. So many other things go into producing the one tiny sliver of results that we can see. And in this gap season, I'm just starting this journey for myself of going so much deeper. And maybe you are at that place too. So today, I just want to speak a little bit to some of these questions that had to do with, okay, well, tangibly, like, give us the goods. What are you doing? What's working for you? 
and share some things that I have not actually shared on the podcast before, some things that are really helping me and assisting me in making some of these deeper changes. And then I can't wait to nerd out on all of this even more by bringing some amazing guests on the podcast in the future. So I want to kind of start with this example of, you know, I used like perfectionism, for example. This, this was one of the ways that came to my mind in order to really highlight the difference of addressing something at the level of the external result, the habit itself, versus the deeper root. And hopefully just to give you some awareness of where to start to look. And we're going to talk about kind of the two phases of what it looks like to actually reprogram something. Becoming aware is the first one. And you might be aware of the surface level way that this habit shows up in your life. But it's when you start to look below the surface that you create that real change. So perfectionism might be something that you see, okay, that doesn't really fit with this version of myself that I want to become, I know I need to take more risks. And then maybe you go to work on just showing up and doing something and being less perfect, but you still really, really struggle with feelings of self-judgment and all these other things that come along with perfectionism, which is showing up on the surface. Maybe you're even willing to go a level deeper and say like, okay, perfectionism for me is also tied to this need that I have for control. I just need to control things. I, I want to make sure like I'm the one that needs to do it. I have trouble outsourcing and delegating. I have trouble receiving help. And until you actually look at the deeper root and the subconscious root behind these things, we're not accessing the place where actual change happens. So what is your relationship with control or perfectionism? What do you believe it's keeping you safe from? Where did you learn that as a coping mechanism in order to keep you safe? Or have you avoid experiencing pain or shame or things that you don't want to experience? And those are deeper questions. You kind of can't just read a book or listen to one podcast and go, okay, I got it. Like, I'm going to check the box. It actually requires, it has required me to sit with myself for uncomfortable periods of time and utilize some of the tools that I'm going to share with you today to start the process. And I'm about two months into the start of the process of looking at some of these deeper roots and where they came from and healing them at the root level so that not only does the fruit, the external result change, but the entire tree changes. And I want to speak to this right now while I'm still in the process because I don't want to just kind of show up as this like newer, shiny version of myself one day. And you're like, what happened? Like everything is different, but also what happened? We missed it. I want to share with you, like I'm just starting to tap in to the awareness of some of these deeper things that need to shift in order for the entire exterior version of my life, like the reflection of what's going on in the inside in order for that to change It's taking some very deep excavation work and a lot of time and willingness to just sit in discomfort and look at the more subconscious roots, the things that I'm not even, haven't been aware of and bring them into my conscious mind and get the support around addressing them and shifting them like forever. So when I talk about how the gap season length and how intense it feels can really vary depending on the level of transformation you're calling in. At the point that you're really ready to call in big, massive, like life altering transformation, it requires going deep. The height of your transformation and the success that happens on the other side is going to match the depth at which you're willing to meet yourself in your current patterns, the things that need to shift and the parts of you that maybe you've been afraid to look at. So a lot of the questions for today I'm going to break them down into two phases of this reprogramming. And I'm just able to share. I'm I'm not going to pretend that I have this all figured out. I'm only really able to share at the level that I've experienced this myself. So we're talking like kindergarten level (laughs) shifting of patterns and reprogramming because I'm still in it. I'm still in the middle of it right along with you. But if you're starting this process, I don't want to give you like A to Z. I want to give you A to B because that's all you need to worry about for right now. 
So the first two questions, I'm going to read the questions first, and then we're going to break it down into some tools and how to work with this phase. So if we're just going A to B, A to B is becoming aware. So we can't actually shift what we're not aware of. And there were two really great questions that that kind of hit on this theme. And the first one is from Anne Donnelly. Shout out to Anne. And she said, at times the gap is so hard because you're breaking through old habits and beliefs about yourself, but it's even harder when you aren't sure which beliefs are the ones that you should keep and the ones that are holding you back. So even if you're aware of some of the patterns that don't really work for you, like how do you actually know which ones to keep, which ones are holding you back? Again, I think that comes from looking at the deeper root. So a lot of times it's like the habit itself almost doesn't matter. Like if I look at perfectionism, perfectionism also looks like having really high standards for myself. I want to keep that. I just don't want to be ruled by it. I don't want my pursuit of really high, you know, unattainable standards to keep me from moving forward. So a lot of times it's not so black and white, like, do I keep this or do I let it go? It's more of like, how do I use this pattern that I've adopted as a coping mechanism? How do I use it to move me forward instead of allowing it to hold me back? So we're going to talk about this because this is really an awareness question. And then Christy said, how do you reprogram and navigate old beliefs that you weren't even aware were there? until you're in the gap, you're doing the deeper digging, and then you start to learn a lot more about yourself. And then she even mentioned like, what do you do when a past trauma resurfaces and you realize you never dealt with it or you didn't even know you needed to deal with it until like, boom, it's right in front of you. And that's, I think, sometimes the part of the gap that we're afraid. We're afraid to dig deeper because we're afraid of what we'll find. Thinking that it's not still affecting us when it's in our subconscious and it's not something we're consciously aware of. So when it comes to trauma, that is definitely not an area that I am qualified to talk about from like giving anyone else advice. But what I can speak to is there were some things within my past that I was very afraid to look at. In fact, I was so afraid to look at them that I just avoided it completely. I was actually in complete denial. And there were things that really had to deal with my self-worth and how good enough I felt in relationships specifically. But I realized that I've actually chosen to continue suffering because of these past experiences. And really, it's more what I made them mean about myself because I wasn't willing to just go there and, and address it and face the, the discomfort that was unfamiliar. I chose to keep allowing this pattern to influence my life and my worthiness and how I saw myself because it was more familiar to deal with the ongoing dull discomfort that I was familiar with than it was to address, well, I don't know what this is gonna open up if I'm willing to look here. So a couple of tools that I wanna mention, both for if you really resonated with what Anne said or if you resonate with what Christy said, some tools that have really assisted me in the awareness phase Number one, I've mentioned many times that I did start to work with a therapist in this season. Now, I realize therapy is not accessible for every single person, and I just really want to speak to that. But if it's accessible to you, it's one of the most valuable things that you can really invest in. Some, someone to not just process with, but help you learn about yourself. And I found mine through recommendations from friends, friends who are wired very similarly to me and who had really, really positive experiences. But something I actually haven't talked about or shared publicly, people in my life know, is that I chose a, a therapy protocol that also included microdosing. So this is like the last thing I ever thought I would do. I, I just like such a nerd. I really have like never touched any substances whatsoever. And microdosing is like a very, very small dose of mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. And, you know, it's sub perceptual. So it's not like I'm high on mushrooms right now or, you know, tripping out while I'm sitting here in front of the podcast. But it has really helped me to open up awareness into things that I think because there was so much fear that I wasn't willing to look at. And I always had friends tell me, you know, I've had friends who've done it, friends on the podcast who've talked about it and who've done these therapeutic protocols where it's a combination of support and integration with a professional, you know, and a therapist, and then making sure that you're kind of like, you know, getting the dosages right so that it really assists you. 
And friends of mine just kind of always said, you'll know if that's something you feel called toward. And there was just a day where all of a sudden I kind of knew I was ready to dig a little bit deeper and it's been really, really beneficial. So I'm about 60 days into a 90 day protocol. I don't really talk about it on the podcast because I'm still in it and I'm still kind of learning what it's revealed to me and it's been really, really powerful. So therapy or any other sort of supportive integration protocol like that, that you feel called toward and you've done your research and you just for whatever reason feel like it has something to offer you. That has been really powerful for me. The other tool I've mentioned multiple times on the podcast is the journal that my friend Aisha published called the Butterfly Season Journal. And I, she's actually, she was the friend who kind of went before me in this transformation journey. And I've learned so much from her, just sharing her experiences. And she really put all of her healing journey together into this journal with prompts and ways for you to self-reflect to start to open up this awareness like we're talking about. The other thing is journaling. I had never been a big journaler. And in this process, it's something I've started. And it's been really powerful. It took me a while to get into the practice of it. And I'm a little bit on and off, but especially when I was really starting to dig in and just open up awareness about myself. Being able to go back and read through some of those notes, it's funny how things that maybe I would think in my mind go a lot deeper when I put them on paper. So a journaling practice could be really helpful. And then just some like specific tools. You all have heard me talk talk about Joe Dispenza. I love the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza. I think things like meditation or hypno breath work. Um, My friend Francesca is the creator of Mastery Hypno Breath Work. Practices like that, again, I think it's just important to notice what you feel drawn to, are really helpful in opening up insights in your mind. I think the biggest thing that has actually helped me open up more space for awareness is just slowing down and creating more space. I wasn't getting the same insights when I was working, 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 and not creating space to actually just think and allow insight to come to me, but then using some of these other tools. And then another one I've mentioned before, the program called To Be Magnetic, and they kind of combine exercises that help with awareness and exercises that actually help with the reprogramming. So I think it's important to talk first about like, it starts with awareness. You can't reprogram what you're not aware of, but then really everyone else's questions really came down to like, what steps are you taking? How are you actually reprogramming? So thank you to everyone who submitted questions about that. I'll, I'll speak to that just like really quickly because I think it kind of is in two ways. Number one, there's like a part of us that's like, just lead me through, like show me the way. But if we're trying to follow exactly someone else's steps, it might not actually be the steps that we need. If you're someone who finds that you've had trouble really shifting the underlying causes and some of those root causes, that's where maybe the next step for you could be to enlist the help of a professional, someone that can help you go a little bit deeper. And I'm trying a bunch of different things in this season. So I already mentioned the therapeutic protocol with the microdosing. I'm about to, in a few weeks, do some EMDR therapy. So EMDR specifically is a type of therapy that really helps with reprogramming and then really looking into different modalities that help with the subconscious reprogramming process. So the 2B magnetic protocol really explains. I think that's one of the most accessible ways I get paid nothing to mention it to you. It's just been a really, really big support for me in this process. And they have an amazing podcast called The Expanded Podcast. That's a great place to dive in. But really understanding how reprogramming works at a subconscious level. And again, I'm not the expert. I'm not going to even try to stand up here and, and explain it. But for me, the process has looked like bringing awareness through these different tools and then taking that awareness into the different practices, meditation practices, addressing it at the root of where these wounds really came from. And then through the 2B magnetic meditations or find a meditation that really speaks to you that specifically addresses rewiring programs in your mind and try it. Try it for 30 to 60 days. See what works for you. I think if I just try to tell you, here's what I do, 
it's going to work for some people, but but not for everyone. And I really think a big big part of this process for me has been learning to access my own intuition and trust my own intuition in how I work even within some of these recommended protocols. Another one that I haven't used to this point in my journey, but I, I had a guest on the podcast years ago who talked about EFT tapping. Tapping, which you can just look up on YouTube what that is. I feel like a visual of it would be really helpful. Tapping is another way that has a lot of science behind it to to share how it connects and helps to rewire things in our in our mind. There's a lot of different tools. All of this to say, I do believe that there isn't one protocol that is going to work for everybody. Everyone's background is different. Everyone's experience with trauma and what they made it mean is different. And so I really want everything that I do to, to yes, be sharing with you from my the standpoint of like, here's what has worked for me. I don't want to gatekeep. But I also don't believe in a one size fits all approach, especially to healing. So utilize some of the resources. I'll make sure that we include as many links as we can in the show notes. But realize that it starts with the awareness piece. You can't heal what you aren't willing to address. And then when you are approaching the reprogramming process, the biggest thing I can say is it's just required the most patience and grace for myself and compassion for people around me that I've ever experienced. And at the end of the day, I think if this therapy and this journey has shown me anything, it's it's just really that inside, deep down, we really are little kids who are hurting. You know, there's a part of us that if there's a pattern that's been really hard to shift, we're, we're hurting little children who deeply want to experience love and safety and are just going to protect ourselves at all costs from anything that feels like it threatens that. And the more I've just really understood, my mind really does well when I understand the root of what's happening and then have tools to help me shift that. Understanding the science of really what's going on in the brain and the little bit that I've been able to gather from these tools that I'm tapping into has been a really powerful process to be able to slow down, have grace for myself, and realize that, you know, at the end of the day, anything that's going to make real change is going to help us address those deeper subconscious patterns and beliefs But where we all start is looking at the habits that are showing up on the surface. So even if the first step, if you're going from A to B and in the awareness phase, maybe it's starting a journaling practice, maybe it's grabbing a copy of the butterfly season journal. So it's more of a guided journal, but then, you know, A to B to C really kind of probably all the way to Z. If we want to talk about like truly reprogramming something is just a process that's a lot longer and it's much deeper than I've gone so far. And I can't wait to keep sharing with you this journey and bring some of the practitioners that I've been working with onto the podcast to really have you hear from their standpoint why the work that they do is really supportive in a transformation journey. But you can't rush it. You got to go from A to B. And if you're already at B and you're becoming aware, then look at where maybe you've been just looking at the surface and trying to heal it from like a habit standpoint. And what's blocking you from going a layer deeper and who you need to support you to go that layer deeper. I feel like that's actually where the true magic happens. 